While the Haganah slowly stepped up the use of targeted killings, the radical undergrounds had their killing campaign in full swing, trying to push the British out of Palestine. Yitzhak Shamir, now in command of Lehi, resolved not only to eliminate key figures of the British mandate locally, killing CID personnel and making numerous attempts to do the same to the Jerusalem police chief, uh, Michael Joseph McConnell, and the High Commissioner, Sir Harold MacMichael, but also Englishmen in other countries who posed a threat to his political objective. Walter Edward Guinness, more formally known as Lord Moyne, for example, was the British resident minister of the state of, in Cairo, which was also under British rule. The Jews in Palestine considered Moyne a flagrant anti-Semite who had assiduously used his position to restrict the Yishuv's power by significantly reducing immigration quotas for Holocaust survivors. Shamir ordered Moyne killed. He sent two Lehi op operatives, Eliyahu Hakim and Eliyahu Betzuri, to Cairo, where they waited at the door of Moyne's house. When Moyne pulled up, his secretary in the car with him, Hakim and Betzuri sprinted to the car. One of them shoved a pistol through the window, aimed it at Moyne's head, and fired three times. Moyne gripped his throat. Oh, they've shot us, he cried, and then slumped, towards it, uh, slumped forward in his seat. Still, it was an amateurish operation. Shamir had uh, counseled his young killers to arrange to escape in a car, but instead they fled on slow-moving bicycles. Egyptian police quickly apprehended them, and Hakim and Betsudi were tried, convicted, and six months later hanged. The assassination had a des decisive effect on British officials, though not the one Shamir had envisioned. As Israel would learn repeatedly in future years, it is very hard to predict how history will proceed after someone is shot in the head. After the unmitigated evil of the Holocaust, the attempted extermination of an entire people in Europe, there was growing sympathy in the West for the Zionist cause. According to some accounts, up until the first week of November 1944, Britain's Prime Minister Winston, Chir Winston Churchill had been pushing, it, uh, yeah, pushing his cabinet to support the creation of a Jewish state in Palestine. He rallied several influential figures to back the initiative, including Lord Moyne. It is not a stretch to assume that Churchill might have uh, had arrived at the Yalta summit with Franklin Roosevelt and Joseph Stalin with a clear, positive policy regarding the future of the Jewish state had Lehi not intervened. Instead, after the Cairo killing, Churchill labeled the attackers a new group of gangsters and announced that he he was reconsidering his position and the killing continued on July 22nd 1946 members of Menachem Begin's Ergen planted 350 kg explosives which I assume is kilograms of explosives in the south wing of the King David Hotel in Jerusalem where the British mandates administration and army and intelligence offices were housed a warning call from the Ergen apparently was dismissed as a hoax. This is the first time I have seen a semicolon used this entire book. For real, whoever wrote this. As a hoax, the building was not evacuated before a massive explosion ripped through it. 91 people were killed and 45 wounded. This is not the targeted killing of a despised British official or a guerrilla attack on a police station. Instead, it was, a pl it was plainly an act of terror, aimed at a target with numerous civilians inside. Most damningly, many Jews were among the casualties. The King David Hotel bombing sparked a fierce dispute in the Yishuv. Ben-Gurion immediately denounced the Ergun and called it an enemy of the Jewish people. But the extremists were not deterred. Three months after the King David attack on October 31st, Alehi Sel, again acting on their own without Ben-Gurion's approval or knowledge, bombed the British embassy in Rome. The embassy building was severely damaged, but thanks to the fact that the operation took place at night, only a security guard and two Italian pedestrians were injured. Almost immediately after that, Leahy mailed letter bombs to every senior British cabinet member in London. On one level, this effort was a spectacular failure. Not a single letter exploded. But on another, Leahy had made its point and its reach clear. The files of MI5, Britain's security service, showed that Zionist terrorism was considered the most serious threat to British national security at the time, even more serious than the Soviet Union. Ergun cells in Britain were established, according to one MI5 memo, quotes, 
to beat the dog in its own kennel, unquote. British intelligence sources wanted a wave of attacks on, in quotations, selected VIPs. Among them, Foreign Ministry Ernst Bevan and even Prime Minister Clement Attlee himself. What the fuck? Whatever, I read poorly. At the time of not, at the end of 1947, a report to the British High Commissioner tallied the casualties of the previous two years. 176 British mandate personnel and civilians killed. Only these actions, these executions, caused the British to leave, David Shomron said, decades after he shot Tom Wilkin dead on a Jerusalem street. If Abraham Stern had not begun the war, the state of Israel would not have come into being. One may argue with these statements. The shrinking British Empire ceded control of the majority of its colonies, including many countries where terror tactics had not been employed due to economic reasons and increased demands for independence from the native populations. India, for instance, gained its independence right around the same time. Nevertheless, Shamran and his ilk were firmly convinced that their own bravery and their extreme methods had brought about the departure of the British. And it was the men who fought that bloody underground war, guerrillas, assassins, and terrorists. There is not an and there. It's a list of three things. But there's no and at the end of the list. Why is it written like this? This is torture. And it was the men who fought that bloody underground war, guerrillas, assassins, and terrorists who would play a central role in the building of the new state of Israel's armed forces and intelligence community. That is the end of chapter one. Next recording will be chapter two, A Secret World is Born.